All praise due to Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well in the spirit. Shalom to the Akim out there pushing the word in sincerity and truth. My, my name is Ak Irakadash Aban, and I got brother. Yawanathan Aitazah. All right, shalom. so uh, Shalom, brother, Shalom. <clears throat> so we're here. Uh, uh, speaking on uh, the current events of uh, March 20th, 2017, where uh, Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh <clears throat> has decided to take back one of the uh, the leading devils of the earth, of the Illuminati, David Rockefeller, has taken him back to the spirit world to to awake to wait when he till he comes back on the earth to serve the uh, the elect, the 144,000 in the kingdom of heaven on earth. All right, so uh, they can't escape in death, even though uh, they've died on this side in in Babylon. Supposedly, it's still a chance that uh, the way the devil works that you know that they, they know a major catastrophe is uh, up and coming. We got a lot of things happening in these current events, so it's very possible that they've uh, just faked his death and he's hiding out, uh, trying to uh, let the, the scourge, so to speak, you know, the destruction pass and try to come back on the other side. But we know where uh, these days is winding down, and uh, <clears throat> the destruction is nigh at hand. So okay, okay. we're, we're going to go to uh, the first scripture, which is uh, <clears throat> the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 25. All right, Mark 13 and 25. Okay. Because, uh, right. <clears throat> yeah, you could read on, brother. Okay. This is the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 25. It says, and the stars of heaven shall fall. And the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Yeah, so <clears throat> the stars, <clears throat> slack it. The stars that are falling. When when you read the Bible, the, the Bible has many, many parabolic uh, sayings and scriptures. So the stars that are falling is the men that are exalted in this earth, and the men who are exalted in this earth today is the so-called white man. And there's other people underneath them which are also considered stars or people who are looked up to. When you look up. From the earth to the sky, you look up to the stars. So just like on earth, there are people that has been look, looked up to as they're greater than uh, the coming people. David Rockefeller was one of the, uh, the stars of this earth, of this current world. David Rockefeller's name resonated from the west to the east, from Japan, China, Europe, and America, all across the earth. The Rockefeller name is exalted above many other names. Including the Rothschilds and uh, other elite so-called European people and European Americans He's the elite of the white race, okay? The David Rockefellers of the world, the Rothschilds of the world So the stars shall fall from heaven He fell literally into uh, his grave The Lord uh, chose him to uh, bring him back at this time We know that uh, the elite will be judged and they will go into slavery. So the Most High has chosen to bring some of them back into the spirit world to, to receive their judgment, which is slavery in uh, in the kingdom of heaven. So it says, uh, read it again, brother. Yeah, Salakia. This is um, Mark 13. Salakia, let me get it. Mark 13 and 25. It says, And the stars of heaven shall fall. And the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Yeah, the powers that are in heaven. Heaven is a condition on earth. It's also the spirit world, but the spirit world is not being shaken because the spirit world is what's calling the shots. Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. So the heavens that are shaken is the, the, the ruling governments. Just like the stars are the exalted people of the earth, like the Pope, the Rothschild family, the Rockefeller family, the Illuminati families, the uh, the so-called the so-called Royal House of England, okay, and the other royal banking families of Europe. Those are the stars of heaven, including literal stars. They call lesser luminaries, like the celebrities of this earth. They're also stars, but we're focusing on the elite, the Illuminati, and the powers of heaven are the governments of the world. They are shaken. They are shaking at this very hour. Because one of their so-called stars, their their uh, one of their leaders has fallen. You know, right. the Most High chose him at 101 years old. This uh, old devil, this old goat, David Rockefeller, to uh, bring him back and face and face his judgment for being one of the major demons on earth. Uh, we know that there's nothing new under the sun. So, so we know th this is one of the uh, 
the sons of Esau from the ancient world and one of the ancient Roman uh, leaders from the ancient world come back and was ruling over our people in the last days, which is the Israelites. So the powers of heaven are shaking. The powers of heaven are the banking families. The United States of America is shaking because one of their icons has, uh, has died. All right. So uh, the next scripture we're going to go to, if you don't have nothing to add. Yeah, I got a quick precept if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Just to back you up, um, because it says that the stars of heaven shall fall, right, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. So, like the brother was saying, that um, you know, that the heaven is a, uh, it's like allegory for a high rulership or high position in the planet Earth. This um, the scripture in Psalms pretty much explains that. So this is Psalm seventeen, and I'm gonna start at verse eight. I'm gonna read eight and nine, then I'm gonna jump down to um, eleven to to get to the point. But Con. It says, keep me as the apple of the eye. And by the way, this is a, a psalm of David, a prayer to the Most High to protect him from his enemies. So we know this happened on the planet Earth. It says, keep me as the apple of the uh, of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked, press me. From my deadly enemies who compass me about. So this is the point in verse 11. It says, they have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Mm. So basically, they looking from a high position of rulership. You know, basically, they looking down their eyes on the planet Earth. God. So they looking down on Earth. That means it's not. It's, this is a again. This is parabolic. It's not saying that they literally are sitting up in the, you know, in outer space. It's talking about how they just look down on us because we're the so called minorities of society. So they're the rulers, and we are the you know the the base people. The regular citizens, so so to speak, you know. So yeah, literally, yeah, some of these people actually live in uh, pe the the penthouses, the penthouses, and uh, and the towers of specifically uh United States of America, uh New York City. Like uh, Donald Trump is a very low level person within the Illuminati structure, a very low level. But some of these, uh, we know the Illuminati when they come to the New York City, Los Angeles, Japan. They're literally in the top buildings. Called penthouses, uh, towers, uh, skyscrapers. They have their offices in those places, so they actually literally look down on people, you know, and and and, and do their plans to further their agenda, which is uh, the new world order to worship actually Lucifer. You know, that's their agenda. Their Satan and their their vibration they're on is Lucifer. So they are a very top position on Earth. Yep, yep. So uh, the next scripture we're gonna go to is gonna be uh. The book of Luke 10, verse 18. All right. To go on the theme, uh, continue the theme about people who are, who are at a high position on earth falling at this very hour because the Lord's people, the Israelites, are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. These are the names, the slave names given to the Lord's people. The Israelites are our forefathers are, are written of in the Bible. But we are a historical people. People try to say the Bible is just... Uh, or allegory, or allegorical, or metaphorical. No, it's actually uh, uh, a majority historical with many uh, wise sayings, which are, which are parables it, within them because the, the God we're dealing with is the God of knowledge. So these people are above the Lord's people, so they're coming down as we speak. So the brother's going to read another scripture, which is parabolic and it's spiritual. So you can read that. Um, this is the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld sa Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That's right. So uh, this is our Lord, Yahweh Shai, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. He's a black man. He was he was uh, alive during the, the Roman Empire. He was uh, walking on the earth, I should say, during the Roman Empire. He's telling his disciples that Satan was falling as lightning. So we know Satan... Is actually controlled by the Father Yahweh. He's a uh, he's just an agent for the for the Most High to uh, to fulfill his purpose on Earth because the, these rich uh, rich families called the Illuminati they worship Satan on the left hand side and they they actually are being controlled and influenced, thinking they have a shot at world rulership and etern and, and immortality. This is what Satan is actually because Satan is the tempter. We know that uh, Satan himself uh, went up to the Lord himself, Yahweh Shai, and offered him the kingdoms of the world. But who who actually rules the kingdoms of the world today? 
is actually the, the, the banking families, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the, uh, the rich families of Europe and the Vatican and, uh, and uh, England, the rich uh, uh, royal, so-called royalty of England, they were promised and given the kingdoms of the world. So we know that uh, when it says Satan is falling as lightning, their rulership is falling as lightning, meaning very rapidly. When you see lightning fall, it happens at, at a blink of an eye. So right. we know uh, since they started ruling, they actually ruled during the Greco-Roman Empire. That was a very short time in world history. When they came back during the Renaissance or the rebirth of the Greco-Roman uh, zone or the Greco-Roman image, it's only been around 500 years. So that's actually going to be cut short. We're in the year 2017. 1492 was when they first started to... Uh, uh, be loosed on the earth It says Satan should be loosed on the earth And they started conquering the world Through the Spaniards, through the British and the French So when the Lord was saying Satan shall fall as lightning It's saying that in the overall uh, his, his Historical view In the overview of history It's very rapid That the so called white man Because they represent Satan on earth They shall fall as lightning Their rulership is not too long Compared to eternal life compared to the kingdom of heaven that's going to follow thereafter this is why i say satan shall fall as lightning to us it seems like a long time 500 years of european domination in the americas and across the world but to yahweh shai when he spoke in the roman empire that they fell as lightning it's really in god's view is as lightning you know what i'm saying it's as lightning because it's very rapidly. It's, not, it's nothing compared to the rulership that's coming after, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth for the for the nation of Israel. So, uh, I got a quick precept to back you up. Con. You could break it down. It's actually continuing in Psalm 17. Um, I'm going to continue on verse um, 13. It says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Hmm. So the sword of the uh, the sword of the Lord, or the vessel that is used by the Lord to punish, was actually the so-called Europeans, because they came and and, uh, the, and and fulfilled what was the curse upon the Lord's people of breaking the laws of God. The, the Lord, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, told the Israelites through Moses, "If you break my laws, you shall go into slavery." So who was used, that vessel, or th those people, or that nation that was used to put the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans into slavery was the European. What did they use? They used the sword. They used the sword, and they used the gun, because the gun is another, uh, another version of a sword. So they were used as a sword. Also, when you go into the, uh, the book of Genesis, the nation of Esau, or the Edomites, they uh, it, they was told them by uh, Isaac, their father, Jacob, Jacob and Esau received blessings. One was a righteous blessing, one was a, a blessing of world dominance, which is the Edomites. They were blessed with the sword. So the wicked is the sword of the Lord, and uh, the Lord used these people to punish us. And this you see it manifest in North America, Central South America, and the Caribbean, where the the descendants of the Europeans are over. The black Americans, the Native Americans, and Hispanics of black and Indian descent. The wicked is the sword of the Lord. They're, they're the instrument used to punish us. But we're coming out of that punishment now. God, God. I wanted to read. I had the definition of sword. It says in a literary sense, military power, violence, or destruction. So like you were saying, God. it's not, not. it doesn't have to always be a physical sword, even though a physical sword is a weapon. But... It could be anything that's used as a weapon to destroy. That's basically what a sword is. Um, and then continuing on this verse to, to just fully uh, finish the point off. Verse 14, Psalm 17 and 14, which, um, excuse me, I'm going to start up at 13 again and go to 14. It says, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword, from men, which are thy hand. That's right. Oh, Lord. There you go. That's clear. Men Time. from men. The wicked which is thy sword. Then you go to the next verse. Men. So the, uh, the Lord uses men to fulfill his, uh, his plans on earth. The Lord chose a, a special people known as the Israelites. 
These are the people written of in the Bible. Sometimes the Lord blesses them. Sometimes he curses them because they broke his law. So these are the people known and seen in America as the so-called minorities. And the people over us, they're the sword used to punish us. It's not a coincidence that in the last days, before the return of the Lord, whom the world calls Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shai, that uh, these people, uh, the Europeans, are over the earth. Because Satan will be over the earth. The wicked will be over the earth. Like it says in Job chapter 9 verse 24. So this is very clear. People don't want to listen to it because it, it, uh, it seems impossible. But hey, there's many things in the Bible that seem impossible as well. But we have faith that it actually happened. And, and prophecy proves that what the Bible says is true. So we're going to move on to the next scripture, which is uh, Matthew 12, verse 26. The reason sometimes uh, these things have to, been, have to be explained and expounded on is because the world, they have a very, uh, uh, you know, short attention span and they're, they're not uh, spiritually minded, whereas the Bible has many, many uh, deep sayings in it. When you read the Bible, you, uh, people will come across where it talks about that you must study the Bible to actually understand it. You cannot read about... For instance, uh, the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve and the serpent and just, uh, you know, go by the interpretation of man which says it was actually a snake. You know, you can't, you can't just go by that. So many of these scriptures have to be broken down and explained in real terms to explain the, hi the history behind them. So we, we know the history behind them and the current events which fit the scriptures. So we're living in the last days that the Bible speaks of and there's a, a person playing the bad guy, so to speak. And there's people playing the good guy. The, the people that are playing the good guy is the people who have taken the Bible, which belongs to them and is part of their heritage and have woken up to their, uh, the reality that, that we are those people. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites. So right. we have to take back the Bible from our oppressors. And, and right the wrongs and uh, explain these things to the world. This is our job as teachers by the, the blessing and mercy of the Lord. He has given us this knowledge. So, if brother, you got that scripture? John, John, this is Matthew's 26, uh, excuse me, 12 and 26. Matthew's chapter 12, verse 26. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? That's right. If Satan cast out Satan, we know uh, uh, the literal demon, okay, the demon that's spoken of in the Bible, in a spiritual sense, he's not at war with himself, according to what we know, uh, we do know for a fact that the Lord controls the left hand side, he controls evil, he controls the demons, so Satan cannot be literally in the spirit world fighting against themselves, this is speaking once again, as the, the previous scripture, where the wicked is men, this is also speaking of men. In that time, it was the Roman Empire, because the Lord's people were under the Roman Empire. A lot of people uh, have, you know, uh, have love for the Roman Empire, specifically the Europeans. So when you speak of these things, it seems like uh, kind of uh, hard to believe that the Lord will call them Satan. <laughs> but according to the book of Revelation, according to... But the Lord just finished saying that Satan shall cast out Satan. We knew the Roman Empire was soon going to come to an end. All right. They came to the end, the end of the Roman Empire during the Dark Ages. And bringing it up to date, America represents the last, the last leg of the Roman Empire. So they're currently divided amongst themselves. The Americans, the Russians, the Europeans. They're a kingdom. They're all the same people. They all descend of the same biblical character known as Esau or the Edomites, but they're divided amongst themselves. You know, they don't have a, they don't have a plan to join forces and rule the world. They're like, uh, you know, gangsters at, at a table. They cannot agree how they're going to rule the drug trade, how they're going to rule, you know, the illegal uh, gun market, you know, the, uh, the rulership and the oppression of the people. So Satan is actually the people that rule the earth. They're divided amongst themselves. Right. That's obvious. The United Nations, 
what's happening right now in uh what is it capitol hill the senate they're divided amongst themselves there's uh suspicions there's uh treachery there's spying there's wiretaps that's that's uh the, the, that's division you know you wouldn't do that to somebody you you're united to so this this country itself with the cia the nsa you have their Russian counterparts. They're all at odds at one at another because the Lord prophesied, if you want to read that again, of Satan being divided right. against Satan. Right. This is Matthew 20, uh, 12 and 26. And if Satan casts out Satan, that's right. he, is, he is divided against himself. That's right. How shall then his kingdom stand? Yeah, so it's impossible for a kingdom to stand. It's impossible for any organization to any uh, gang, any uh, a basketball team, let alone a country or a kingdom to stand if they're, they're not united. So you cannot uh, continue forth as a, a united people if you're divided. They were divided in the presidential race. They're divided uh, in countries. Because the white man, to put it like that, to put it in those terms, is divided amongst themselves. Uh, the Russians, Americans, the NATO... And other countries are seeing that, so they're trying to gather their uh, their nuclear weapons, so to be prepared themselves. So when the Europeans actually uh, engage themselves in uh, in that final war, which is the War of Armageddon, it's happened before. It's not like I'm saying anything new. World War One, what was that about? Satan divided against Satan. World War Two, the same thing. And we know, according to the Book of Revelation, there's going to be a third world war. Where their kingdom is going to be thrown down. So, uh, if you got something, brother, I'm going to move on to the next scripture. Yeah, just a quick definition. Because um, the word divided in the Greek for that um, verse in Matthew 12, Matthew 12 and 26. It says, um, it says to separate into parts, mm. to divide into parties, mm. to be split into factions. Yeah, break that down, huh? Yeah, so that's basically, you know, when you look at America for an example, you see how they have the Republican and the Democratic parties. They're split. It's like two split, supposed to be opposite people, and that's ruling over one nation. It goes so, beyond that. Tea parties yeah, and kind of, uh, all kind of parties. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's a clear definition that's showing you that, um, and also to hearken on the same point that it's saying that Satan... Dividing against Satan, how shall his kingdom stand? So mm. this is talking about on earth. This is all taking place on earth because it's physically talking about a kingdom, which at the time when Yahweh Shai was on, um, when he was given this account, it was the Roman Empire, which is the Edomites. It's the same people that's ruling today. It's the same European, the same bloodline of people, which are the Edomites. So we know that they made this mistake already before as the Romans, and they're doing the same thing again. You know, in the Romans, you had the same type of... Uh, spirit in their kingdom it was like it was like two it was like they were going against each other like those all these debates and stuff like that they going against each other but they supposed to be of the same kingdom so we know that can never work you know that's not godly that's not of the most high spirit of yahweh bashim yahweh Shai. that's the spirit of satan you know? also uh i don't believe i ever heard any so-called christian ever or even any muslim say that satan literally has a kingdom where is the kingdom of Satan uh, according to the people who follow Christianity or who follow Islam or who follow Judaism? They couldn't answer that because it's not literally a, a, a spiritual kingdom of Satan. It's actually literal, uh, literal how we uh, just finished saying. So things that are spoken in the Bible, it, it can't be always taken at the face value. It has to be looked upon that has uh, a physical counterpart many times, like the dragon. Mentioned in Revelation, it's not an actual dragon. It's uh, in the ten horns of the dragon. It's not a literal ten horns like we know horns to be. They're actually countries. So Satan divided against Satan and their kingdom not standing is literal a kingdom that rules the earth, and that's the United States of America, which is the last remaining superpower. And the Russians now have turned back and remembered that they also are a superpower. So that's why they are, uh, they are, uh, they you know they're pushing their weight around in the so-called Middle East, and that's a beautiful thing because that's prophecies coming to pass, where uh, now Satan divided against Satan has taken a new meaning and a new level in, in prophecy, whereas the, the Lord is going to have these two countries lock in for uh, the ultimate war, the war of Armageddon. Yeah, 
That's right. So, brother, uh, I, I got a, uh, I got the Mark three twenty six. It's a uh, almost the same scripture, but it has a specific part in it with, which I want to expound on. This is Mark chapter three verse twenty six. If you, if you right. get that, I got it. Yeah, Mark three and twenty six. And if Satan rise up against Satan himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. Yeah, so the rising up part of Satan, you know, once again, this is not talking about a spiritual being, you know. We know there's a spiritual being being controlled by the Lord. And he, he in turn, is the God of the people that rule this earth, like the Illuminati, the Rothschilds, and, uh, and all the control of the armies and the banking systems and the economies. And uh, the, metals, the the medicine fields, the science fields, they're rising up am amongst themselves with the protests. You know, there's people rising up against Donald Trump. Those people rising up against the wars in Iraq, in Afghanistan. There's people rising up. There's a truth, a truther movement where you have Edomites, so-called white people, against other Edomites. They rise up against themselves, saying, "You people are liars. You're deceiving the people. You're." Uh, and there's other people saying, you know, there's a corrupt government. You have militias in uh, down south and other parts of the Midwest. Those are other Edomites. They rise up against the government. There's a other there's other other Edomites, so-called white people, that are against the Jewish people, saying they're they're at fault. So all throughout Esau's kingdom or Satan's kingdom, they rise up against each other. So we see that today. There's so much uh, examples of that that this can only be speaking about one people. You know, the people that rule the earth, they have so many uh, fraction, uh, factionalism, the, the vision amongst themselves that they, uh, the, the scripture ends up and says that they have an end. So we're seeing the end right now. You know, people right. think that these these hearings and uh, in uh, about the wiretaps and uh, the spying and the uh, infiltration of the Russian government to America. This never happened before. And it's already it's and we know that it's uh that it's the end because uh the nuclear the nuclear uh proliferation and that talk it's uh, a major topic within all this news all the uh the reports that are coming out this is the difference between now and the 80s you know there's much more players in the game now to put it like that north korea you have many uh many uh muslim groups that have uh sought to get nuclear weapons so all throughout this system, the, the stakes are higher. And we know in the Middle East, Syria, USA, and Russia, the, in, within Syria, you have USA, Russia, and the Israelis. That's never happened before. So this is why we have confidence that these are actually the, the days spoken of in the Bible where the Lord is coming back, you know? Right. So, uh, I got a, a yeah, go ahead, bro. point real quick, because um, you were just going into that, you know, like about the, all the war. And you see how, like, North Korea, they just said something about um, the most merciless attack. Like, they're ready to do the most merciless attack on America. You know, and that's, like, that's a big thing. People are taking this, like, it's just a rumor. But it could just be, you know, that we don't know exactly if they are really going to try to attack. But it's the fact that it's being spoken about in these last days. You know, it's the fact that, that the tensions of nuclear war and nuclear threats is, is at an all-time high. You know, it's on your everyday news. It's on a mainstream level right now where they're reporting it on New York Times. You know, they're reporting it all across the world, really. You know, and all all, all across the world, all news sites are reporting on nuclear war, on nuclear threats. You know, nuclear advancements of Iran, of North Korea. You know, so this is something that's like, it's here. It's, it's right in front of everyone's face, you know. Come on, come on. You cannot deny it anymore. You cannot hide and say oh we're just conspiracy theorists or we're just looking too deep at this point now he saw himself and through his media is telling you that there's a there's a, a pending danger of nuclear war between the nations you know and the chief the two chief players in this thing is two edomites so we know that this scripture is very true when it says satan rising mm. up against satan because because if you've seen today on the live you know the council that they had the hearing of the fbi and you know, NSA and the DOJ, they were saying, they asked, there was a woman that asked, um, she asked the, 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 you know, the spokesperson for the FBI, is they consider Russia an adversary. And the word Satan means adversary. Mm. That's what the word Satan itself means. And they said yes. Both of them just said yes, clear cut. 
it just said, yes, that is our enemy. So we know this time that we live in, and those are the two strongest, possibly the two strongest um, nations that exist on the planet Earth, you know, America and Russia, United yeah, States. Yeah, they definitely Russia. are. They definitely are. Right. And next you might have China, which you see they're all in the mix as well. So this thing is, um, it's like a it's like a boiling pot waiting to, you know, to explode. You know? Mm-hmm. But that's all I wanted to say. You could keep, um, you got a scripture? Yeah, so uh, going back on the topic of uh, the, da- the, the David Rockefeller and the Rockefellers, can you give me uh, the book of Job, chapter 20, verse 10? Job 20, verse 10. We know that uh, since they, uh, these people rule the earth, what people uh, seem to forget is they have so much money and wealth that they can actually uh, contribute to the, uh, the poorer populations. They can do that. Because they have, don't, don't, uh, ah, don't the gangsters, when they control a neighborhood, don't they give out turkeys uh, in every Thanksgiving and sometimes in Christmas they give out gifts to the poor? So imagine people that rule the earth. So people think because, because I've seen uh, news reports, uh, you know, where they're saying David Rockefeller was one of the world's major philanthropists, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. philanthropy. Title, yeah. So uh, what's that? Giving to the poor or extending to the arts, to the, uh, to the communities, to the, uh, to the society, you know, open up museums, open up libraries, you know, airports, highways. Yeah, but if you rule the earth, that's, that, that's the least you can do, you know what I'm saying? But these people are the wicked because they have secret agendas and we're going to go into that most high willing in the next couple of uh, scriptures where these people have a secret agenda. This is the point. Them representing Satan on earth, they, they don't want the kingdom of heaven to come. They want to set up what's called the new world order. Whereas in Europe was the old world, Europe was, Europe was called the old world, they want to set up a new world. And this world, everything is going to be changed. You know, the history is already changed, but they're going to try to wipe out all that history and start new. They worship actually uh, science and knowledge, and ultimately they worship the devil, you know, Satan. They are the devil and they worship Satan. So they want to, it's, it's obvious through the society that they're changing society through their... Uh, through their gradualism, through their media. So they want to set up a new world order where they control the population and they show that in a lot of movies where everybody will be technological slaves with the RFID chip implant. There will be uh, the eradication or the, the taking away of the, uh, the physical dollar and the coins and the, and the monetary system. It will be changed to electronic the electronic means of uh, buying and selling through a microchip. So we know that's part of their agenda. This is this is one of the reasons they're Satan. They're adversaries. They're adversaries to the, the true plans of God, with of Yahweh, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth, where the laws of God will be uh, instituted on earth. You know, so the Lord's people have to uh, prophesy of this land falling. And of the new kingdom to come. So we're calling people to return back to the Bible. Because the laws of the Bible are going to return back. And be instituted on earth. So just because these people. There's many people that think. Uh, the, the the Rockefellers. The Rothschilds. All these. The Astors. There's many families within the Illuminati. That actually have their names on uh, funds. Like a. Uh, what's it called? Like a. Uh, they contribute to the society. You know. They're philanthropists. Right, right. So if you can read that scripture, the mo- uh, the Most High through Job spoke of these people, the wicked that rule the earth, who uh, who have all the riches and uh, they they try to act like they uh, they're doing good by uh, giving to the poor. So you can read that, bro. Where was it at? Job twenty and what verse? I, I Sorry, believe. What verse? Salak. Let me. Uh, I had it written down here. It says uh, it's gonna be the book of Job. Chapter 20, verse 10. All right, so start at 10. All yes, right. sir. Time. This is Job 20 and 10. His children shall seek to please the poor. Yeah, his children. The children of the people that that rule this earth, that conquer this earth, because the Europeans conquered them. Let's focus on the United States of America. After the slavery, you know, for those 400 years or 300 and plus years, the genocide of the Native Americans or the near genocide, the oppression of the Hispanics in this country, many families started rising up with with major wealth. One was the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers, you had uh, the Gettys, the DuPonts with the oil. There was other families with the steel. All those families started rising up. 
but it was in in a country that was uh, stolen. You know, this land was stolen. Then you had the other uh, within Sp the Spaniard Edomites. They conquered Mexico, the Caribbean, South America, and Central America. So they became billionaires and millionaires. But in the United States of America, the major family here is the Rockefellers. So his children shall seek to please the poor. This is why they're known as philanthropists. They contribute to the poor. You know, uh, people might bring that up. Oh, the Rockefellers, they did a lot to, uh, to fund a lot of, of the uh, poorer people's programs. But it don't matter because the Lord right here is prophesying against them. So if you want to read on, brother. It says, and his hands shall restore their goods. Yeah, their goods. This is our goods. You know what I'm saying? All the riches of the United States of America, North America, belongs to the Native Americans, the tribe of Gad. All right? The Mexicans, uh, the Native Mexicans, the Aztecs, those people working, you know, like, uh, you know, in slavery positions in this country, in Babylon the Great, so-called Mexicans of Aztec descent, that whole country belongs to them, you know? In Central America, the same thing. In South America, it belongs to the Native Americans and the black Americans. And the, and the blacks there, because they serve slavery there, to the Europeans. So they, they seek to restore their goods. Those goods are ours. You know, they can't give us anything that don't belong to us. So you want to read on? John, this is verse 11. His bones are full of the sin of his youth. That's right, brother. So you want to break that down? That's obvious. The sins of his youth is slavery. Slavery and genocide. The sins of his youth, when America, when the first Americans came here, they came enslaving people, killing people. So you could you like, break that down, bro. Yeah, yeah, kind of. It says his bones. So it's showing you like this is something embedded in them, you know. Kind. Their bones. It's down to their bones. It's mm. like we know that this is a deep thing. It's not just um, on the surface of just things that's going on today, like how they still killing, you know, Jake's on the street, children, mm. unarmed kids. You know, this is a thing that goes back, like the brother was saying, the slavery, even before then, you know, but we dealing with the history of America, you know, because that's the time that we living in. We living in the time of the American empire, you know, the so-called American empire it said his bones are full of the sin of his youth. So his youth being what? You know, the, the things that he did in his early stages, you know, the things that they did when they first got here to America, breaking the treaties of, you know, the treaties that they made with Gad on this land, you know, to to protect them or whatever it was to trade and all that stuff. They broke every last one of them. Kind, kind. You know, and that was a sinful thing because the scriptures tell you about making oaths, you know, with your brothers and stuff like that and and keeping the, the you know, the um, not, how, how, what does it say to um, Salakia, the one about, the, the, the borders of the land I should just probably get yeah, it I should now remove that neighbor's landmark yeah yeah that yeah the water brother come, that's come, what I'm talking come. about um, yeah you know so they did all of that they, they broke every law not only that they or every treaty that they made but they broke every law in the Bible you know um, towards a towards a so called brothers you know because Esau and Jacob are supposed to be brothers they supposed to be twin brothers you know that was a sinful thing that they did and um and it says, neither, wait, no, no, so like it, which shall lie down with him in the dust. So his bones are full of the sins of his youth, youth which shall lie down with him in the dust. And that's where Rockefeller's at right now. Don't know where he will be in the next couple months, you know, when his body actually starts breaking down back to the dust that he came from, you know? That's right. And also that this country is going to be dust. There with you the go. nuclear, the nuclear, the nuclear missiles being launched from the NATO countries and Russia and the other countries, this country is going to become, after the nuclear fire evaporates the buildings and all the infrastructure and the foundations, the streets of this country, it's going to become dust. It's going to be fire, brimstone, and dust. So it's going to lay down all that oppression, that slavery, that genocide, those broken treaties, okay, that racism, that, 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 that wicked, demonic, uh, you know, character of Esau, how he had making fun of our people, you know, calling our people's niggas, spicks, coons, wetbacks. All that's going to lay in the dust, okay? That's right. So you can read on, bro. Yeah, this is verse 12. Um, though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he though he hide it under his tongue, yeah. though he spare it. Oh, so like, go ahead. Yeah, they, they hide it under their tongue. Their true, their true agenda is hidden under their tongue, Ark. You know? Right. They, they, it's sweet in his mouth because... It seems uh, that they have uh, they have it all figured out. You know the New World Order, the FEMA camps, the the, the, the concentration camps, the RFID chip implant uh, technology, 
the collapse of the U.S. dollar, all right, the, uh, the auto, is, is they have something called order, auto ad chaos, which is order out of chaos. This is their highest agenda where they create chaos in society and then they try to step in and act like they're all free and help or in, in setting up order, order out of chaos. So they set the chaos up and uh, they try to set up the order as well. So they, they, they're trying to play both parts. So it's sweet in his mouth. And that seems like a genius idea. But it's an evil genius, you know. That's something only a serpent would do, a devil. That's they, right. So uh, They got something called problem, reaction, solution. Exactly. That's basically another form of it. You know, it's just another uh, way how to say it. So people can understand too, you know. These are things you can actually look up online. You can read about it. It's real things, you know. Come this, But um, you want me to keep reading? Yeah, brother. Yeah, verse 13, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep, excuse me, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth. Yeah, because it is. Yeah, 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 bro, break it down. Now, nah, um, I was going to keep reading, but it says, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth. So it's like, even though all these things is happening in the world where he's, um, you know, because even on the left hand, they got things that throw them off of course you know that they gotta you know replan or re you know organize it but it's like even though all that stuff is going on they still don't forsake their plans they exactly. still think that there's still a chance you know that's that pride that they got there's still a chance that they can um still overcome and yeah we'll, we'll still create our new world order even though mm -hmm. all the odds is pretty much against them you know in the time that we in all these nations are rising up against them china you know north korea uh russia and that, you know but these elites the, the Illuminati, they still want to go through with their plan. Exactly. They're, trying, they're not going to forsake it not. They're not going to forsake that plan. And like the scripture says, um, so they be moved out of the way. But go ahead. Now, yes, Salakia, even well, with one of their major uh, mob bosses, one of their major players, David Rockefeller, dying today, March 20th, 2017, they're not going to forsake those plans. They're going to go, they're going to go full-fledged with those plans. It could even be uh, being sped up now, knowing that they didn't have an opportunity to save one of their, their major uh, leaders, you know, David Rockefeller. It would just be passed on to his his uh, nearest male uh, relative, which is probably one of his sons. That's right. Or one of the nephews. But they know they keep it in the bloodline. Like the Dukes of Edom, spoken of in the book of Genesis. These people are the same. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. These people are the same spirits of the Edomites. Okay? And the uh, and, uh, ancient Roman... Uh, hierarchy that 